Hello everybody, it's Sephiroth's Level 4 for a special preview episode of Final Fantasy VII Dirge of Cerberus. We're going to take a look at the training mode here, just so that we don't have to do it for the main let's play, and just, I don't know, go over the basics of gameplay and everything else, and if you want to skip this video and go straight to the story, well, that's awesome too. Um, so, there's actually a lot of mechanics here. Um, so we're just going to take a look at everything, uh, starting with the comprehensive reference mode. This is kind of the same things that the tutorial gives you, but it's a lot all at once. <laughs> it's just the general button layout and everything. Um, this game is a PlayStation 2 game, so it has you know, uh, you know, L1, 2, and 3, uh, R1, 2, and 3, and uh, all the other little things. You got magic and shoot and all sorts of fancy schmancy things. Um, I mainly recorded this actually as a test of the system just to see you know, if a recording will actually look well, but afterwards I decided, you know what? <laughs> this works for episode zero. Okay, so it's nice that the game gives you a reference mode so that if you don't want to go through the entire training you can just check on the Verifying basic data. things, but Let's go through training mode where it tells you everything. Good day, Mr. Valentine. This is so very much a PlayStation 2 game, you can see. But, um, yeah, look at Vincent there. It's fancy Turk outfit. Session one. This exercise will involve the collecting of items as well as simple combat with virtual targets. Please be aware that Shinra Manufacturing is not responsible for any injuries or loss of life caused by the simulation That's very program. comforting. If you have any questions during the session, information can be accessed from the TTT terminal. By accessing the TTT terminals located within each area of the training mode, you can confirm in your current objective in view. Okay, whatever. I've read through it really quickly, so... Um, yeah, movement is the left analog stick and the X button to talk to things. Uh, and the first thing that you have to do is uh, chase a little red mini bot around. Um, I actually like how they go about this. They don't throw everything at you at once. It's like, okay, no shooting or, or even like camera movement at first. It's just follow this thing and stay close to it and it'll go in uncomplicated patterns. So I don't know if they just assume people aren't good at the game or, or whatever, but it's not a bad idea. And you get points for staying close to the uh, the mini bot. Um, I'll talk more about like yeah, now then it starts then it starts getting drunk. I'll talk more about like the game itself uh, in the actual let's play because I don't want you know to get uh, bogged down here. But anyway, the right analog stick now uses the camera. Woo! So we can't move. Uh, the purpose of this is just to keep your eye on a target, uh, like keep the thing in the camera as it moves around the stage, which is actually a really cool idea for an exercise as well. You know, trying to just stay stationary. Um, it's just, I don't know. It, this, game, this game has a very interesting way of teaching, is what I'm trying to say. I just recognize all these assets from Crisis Core. <laughs> Listen, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But, um... I'm trying not to talk about... I'm not trying not to talk about the game, uh, itself. Um, mainly just the, the training. So now it's a combo. You know, you got the walking around and moving the camera. Even though you really don't need to move the camera that much for this thing anyway. It'll get interesting soon, don't worry. But uh, this this game does have like a few uh, things to get. Like I, I've been considering... Oh, first, left analog stick, move camera. Uh, okay, so now we got the L3 button that resets the camera. Uh, so now it's going to be really complex, and you have to use the the, the clicky to uh, center the camera in front of yourself. 
so this game has like a few types of collectibles and things, and I'm gonna try to get all of them. Um, there is some sort of ending, s s different ending or something, um, that's based on uh, some of the collectibles. So I'm like definitely gonna do that. But um, you know, there's just you know general these things called memory capsules or something. Uh, I'm just gonna try to keep uh, in a list so that it's uh, I could do it. Uh, now we can learn about doors. You can go through doors that are blue. <laughs> doors that are red, you cannot. And doors that are gray, don't open. Uh, pressing up on the D-pad gives you a mini-map, which is really nice. You can also move while the map is open, which is also really nice. This game has like, I don't know, just the, the style is like a combination between like what they did for Crisis Core and like Metal Gear Solid with like its just its looks and its vibes but that just may be the PS2 era. Uh, now we can jump also Vincent can double jump which is pretty dang cool. You ever think about how double jumps work and how that's completely physically impossible? Because I don't. Uh, you can climb ladders if you really want to. Like I learned, I, I heard that that's like in Star Wars, the Jedi's can double jump because they use the Force to push themselves up, and that makes sense. But that's about it. Uh, that thing was telling us that if you see like these little things on the walls with like green lights, it means there's a light you can get from it. Also, jukeboxes sell items, which is neat. Oh, that's the TTT menu. Okay. And there's a phoenix down. So Phoenix down, uh, this forces you to go into the menu. Um, yeah, uh, triangle opens the main menu, left and right are shortcuts, and a Phoenix down uh, is just like with Crisis Core as well. It uh, gives you a, uh, a re-raise. Little thing on the wall there. I guess the light does differentiate it from other things, but you know, with all the yeah, we dropped onto the thousand deal over there. With all the like other walls and stuff just being really plain, it doesn't look like that stands out too much. Uh, crouching, you can do crouches and rolls because it's really fun. You can get under small things, destroy your knees, and then just get hit by people. Uh, so we got melee attacks with uh, uh, the square button. You just deck that guy. Oh, and that opened a door that <laughs> let that guy go through. That was just very amusing. Um, yeah, if you're get if you get knocked down, you can get back up again. They're never gonna keep you down. So this is just a practice for getting knocked down, which is kind of funny. There's, I don't know, I, I get amused by stupid things. Uh, down there is another phoenix down in case for some reason you died already. Uh, you can string combat, uh, melee combat along by pressing uh, O. Did I say square before for melee? It might have been O, but we're getting a ton of bullets, which is nice. Even though we can't use our gun yet. Speaking of using our gun, though. Hooray. Session two. This exercise will focus on basic features of the handgun. Hooray. So yeah, the handgun is your main weapon. Uh, R1 is the sight. O is lower weapon. R2 is reload. L2 is toggle, and the other thing was zoom. Um, after pressing R1, your weapon sight will be displayed, so you can lock onto enemies, which is really nice, uh, or move the uh, sight uh, manually to lock onto enemies. Um, it's actually a pretty simple system. Uh, as you can see, like we have the, the general site there, and the uh, yeah, the the red is the lock on. Um, and as I was showing over there, you can if you're if you know what you're doing, you can do it pretty rapidly as well uh, with the handgun. 
you just go from one target to another without you know necessarily looking as long as your green sight is in the general area you'll you'll hit it uh, now we're gonna start shooting training robots and you also get an assault radar which just shows you the direction that enemies are coming from uh, kill chains I, I mean are chains of kills and they uh, help you out but I didn't really get it <laughs> The, for some reason, like, the lock-on to the boxes is a lot better than the bots. <laughs> we did get rifle bullets. Um, you can do stuff like headshots in this game, but it's not really easy with the handgun, because the handgun just locks onto the torso. But uh, that, like, large oval that you saw is the uh, like the assault radar. As you can see, I'm really, really good with moving targets. Like, obscenely amazing at shooting things that are moving while I am also moving. You know, in real life, that's about as well as like it would go to. <laughs> it's, it's very hard to shoot a moving target and it's very hard to shoot something that while you're moving. So shooting a moving target while you are also moving is kind of ridiculous, but anyway, we got a sniper scope. Not a sniper rifle, just a scope. Congratulations. Session two complete. Session three. This, so this is actually. Focus on basic features of the rifle. Yeah. So the rifle is a long-range weapon for sniping. Um, the sniper scope is an attachment to the to the rifle. Uh, the sniper rifle is not its own weapon, so. Uh, you actually have to go into your menu. The game will do it for us, but you have to go into your menu and customize the weapon to put the scope on it, which is neat, because the implication there is that we'll be able to customize our weapons a bunch. But this, uh, yeah, for this uh, training exercise, we can't uh, can't go into the room, so we have to use our, our rifle to blast everyone. As you can see, it does a little bit more damage than the... <laughs> than the um, handgun. Uh, also, it takes me a few seconds, but then I realize that there are places to left and right of where we are that are open as well. I'm like, oh! So I'm pretty sure I could have just shot the explosive barrels to kill that guy. The um, targeting is actually not so, not too bad. Uh, regarding uh, sensitivity and such. Also, yeah, we just murdered that thing. Now, angles, on the other hand, excuse me, <coughs> angles, on the other hand, not very kind sometimes. We have one more target, and I have no, no idea where they are until they start shooting at me. Now the floor appears. I don't notice it does until I start walking forward, but yay. It's very strange to see like a shooter in Final Fantasy VII, but it makes sense with Vincent, I guess. Again, I'm trying not to like give my thoughts on the game just yet, but we get to use a machine gun now, which is fun. It's close range, very fast bullets. It's a machine gun. It also looks really weird. Uh, you can use the L2 button to toggle weapons. The L2 button is just toggle whatever it is you have, but you know, just go through the, the barrel here, uh, the, the barrel, the menu here, and pick up all these bullets. Delicious, delicious bullets. It's, it's pretty fun. I, I like the machine gun a lot. And we also got a fire materia out of that. I wonder if it will tell us how to use materia soon. If they didn't include materia in the game, I would be kind of upset. 
Also, if the game didn't go over it, you do automatically reload uh, when you run out of a clip, uh, as well as being able to manually reload if you really want to. And we got a Blizzard Materia too. I wonder if there are any other types of Materia in this game. Oh my gosh, a Thunder Materia. Uh, so now Mako points have appeared. You can get MP by standing on those. And now it's going to teach us to use magic, which has the exact same controls as the gun. You just have to press a different button to toggle it. So you're just standing on that. Just gives you MP. It restores MP. Session four complete. Session five. And now we're going to blast people. Focus on materia. So anyway, start blasting. So yeah, now we're going from, we're equipping materia to our weapons, which is interesting. So when you cycle through the weapon, it cycles through the materia. So instead of pressing R2 uh, for your sights, you press L2, or, or instead of pressing R1, you press L1 or something like that. Uh, and it loads up your materia instead of your gun. But it has the exact same targeting feature, so like, you still press the fire button and it explodes things with your bullets. <laughs> it's very cool. It's like a nice synthesis of the two. Also, as you can see, it does a ton. And you also get limit breaks. You press uh, R1 and L1 to activate a limit break and it makes you all fancy and interesting. And I didn't really understand it. Like, it says that you just activate it. And we got the limit breaker there, which you know, gives you a, a limit break, but like, that doesn't mean I understand it. So it just, it just makes you stronger and heals you or something. Yeah, I, I realize that I have to go into my menu and do that. And uh, then, yeah, so you get fully healed. I think you you just get more everything. I don't know. I'm kind of sad because I really wanted to turn into the Galleon Beast. But oh well. Okay. So now, now the fun begins. Uh, we've learned the basics of of the of the guns. You know, we got uh, the the pistol, the rifle, uh, the handgun, the rifle, and the machine gun. But now we get the turret, which. You just sit in it, and you blast away, and you got infinite ammo, and it is fun. It is very, very fun. So now we just wait. We sit and we wait. The main thing that you have to be careful of is not letting enemies get up close next to you, because like that one down there is just trying to uh, jump up by us. Yeah, you. Also, the big problem is that like they they get blasted by the initial um, uh, initial volley, and then they just get back up. So you have to keep keep on them, keep on that crowd control. We are chaining very well, though. It's fun. We got one more one more group just charging straight at us like the geniuses they are. Any game that has a chain gun is, is fun. As long as the chain gun is infinite. It's the one provision. Um, so yeah, that's actually pretty much it with, uh, with training. 
the rest of the game is just like exploration and stuff, and then you just get like a results screen, you know, like, hey, here's how accurate you were and how many targets you destroyed. So we got Sbsazb for chapter zero. And we get an S ranking. And, uh, yeah, we did everything correctly and it gives us money, and I think that actually carries over into the main game. <laughs> and it also recommends what you should play the game as. I wasn't playing it on hard. Um, but yeah, I hope to see you all in the, uh, in the main game. And, uh, look forward to this Let's Play. I've been planning it for a little while now, actually, especially with the, you know, stuff coming out later this year. I felt that it was appropriate. And for my 10th anniversary. So, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in episode one. Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye.